So now that we know a few things about arrays, we can actually use those to start interacting with our spreadsheet and taking ranges as parameters to our functions. So let's create an example of this. Let's go ahead and we will create some documentation. We'll call this, we'll just go ahead and describe what our function is going to do. We're going to say count the number of values in a range. And we're going to pass in a param, and that's going to be a number. We'll go ahead and call it range, and we'll say the range of values to count. And we'll, pat, we'll say it returns a number. You can use return or returns for this, this tag, for this annotation. Either one will work. I think returns is the more common one, but to be honest, I'm not completely sure. Uh, the count of values in the range. And we'll mark it as a custom function. And then we'll create our function, function count values. And we'll pass in a range, and we'll very simply return range dot length and now if we go into our spreadsheet and we put a couple of values in three four five we can just use count values select a bunch of these hit enter and we get five so you can see this is going to pass in our range and we can use that very much like an array here uh, if we create another function, we, we get a little bit more complicated. So let's go ahead and create a function to add up to four things together. Uh, we'll go ahead and create some documentation for it first. So add up to four values together. Uh, we'll pass in a param, and that will be a number array range, the range of values to add. And we'll have it return a number, which is going to be the sum of up to four values in the range because we don't really know how to we don't want to type code forever and we'll see the complication here in just a moment and we'll mark this as a custom function and then we'll call this function add four and we'll pass in the range now on its own this won't do anything if we you know if we were to say add four Oh, we, we get the documentation. It's going to tell us that we have to pass in a number array. It's going to give us the four values together, and it tells us what it does. And if we were to just close it, it wouldn't actually give us anything. So let's have that return a value. We'll say var sum is equal to zero, and at the bottom we'll return sum. So we can now call add four, and it's going to give us a zero. Now. We might have some complication here because we want to actually look at this range, but if we start looking at the range now, let's say if we said if range dot length is greater than zero, sum would be equal to range zero. But this is actually going to give us a problem as we've written it. If we go back to our spreadsheet and we write this, add four. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure we are saved. Um, but if we were to use add four, we're going to see that error. And that error is going to tell us, well, length is undefined because we've passed in something now that doesn't have any meaning because we haven't passed in anything. So add four is looking for this parameter and it's not there. Now, fortunately, in Java or JavaScript or in AppScript, we can use an if statement to check to see if something is valid. So if range well, basically means if the range is defined. If there's anything there, if there's something in range, then uh, in this range uh, parameter, then we'll run this code within our if statement. If nothing is there, we'll be okay. So now if we come back and we modify what we've done just to reset the, uh, the call to the script engine here, you can see here, now that's going to give us zero. It's going to be a safe call. So we can start off with if range dot length is greater than zero, sum is equal to range zero. Uh, if range dot length is greater than one, sum is equal to sum plus range one. And you can see this is going to get really ta tedious. If range dot length is greater than two, sum is equal to sum plus range two. If range dot length is greater than three, sum is equal to sum plus range three. So that's going to actually introduce the concept of loops that we're going to get into in our next module. They're going to make your life much, much simpler and easier. So this add four function, it will add up to four values now, and it should work properly if we haven't made any typos. So if we add four, if we pass in three values, 
should add the first three values. Uh, and if we pass in all four, it should add, pass add all four of the values. But unfortunately, what we're seeing now is that it's actually concatenating those values together. So it's actually bringing our values in as strings. So instead of getting some range as zero, we're actually getting the string zero, the string one, the string two, the string three, which when we add those, it's not going to add them, it's going to concatenate them. Fortunately, we can do that. We can do, uh, we can fix this problem one of two ways. We can either use number to convert this to a number, or we could use parse int or parse float. So let's just go ahead and use number because it seems more general. And we'll go ahead and use number here as well. And what this will do is convert each one of our ranges now to a number instead of some object or, or uh, string. So now if we come back and we reset this, you can see this is going to give us, well, one, two, three, one plus two plus three plus four is 10. And one plus two plus three is six. Uh, what it won't do is add five things. If we pass in five, it's just going to skip that last one and still going to give us 10, even though 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 should be 15, which again, we're going to find that that's easier when we get into loops because it's going to allow us to look at everything in our array in a very generic and generalized way. Uh, so we can use arrays with ranges. We can uh, get into the values and we can see how they work, um, but we're still somewhat limited. So the next module should help with that. But for now, thanks for watching.